a well-researched report in the 1993 issue of the New England Journal of Medicine states that 70% of our diseases are lifestyle related. They went on to say that eight out of nine of the leading causes of death are lifestyle related. That's 89%. Now I know for a fact those numbers are way too low. Virtually every one of our diseases are lifestyle related. I know because I've been studying this for 30 years. I know because I've coached thousands of people. I know when you don't focus on the germ and you focus on the train instead, most if not all of those diseases go away. Now I gotta ask you guys a question. 27 years ago you admitted most of what you're doing doesn't have to do with drugs or surgery. They have to do with lifestyle related, lifestyle choices, meaning that you guys didn't have any solutions. And why do you guys not study lifestyle choices? Why you still do the same thing? Well, there's an obvious reason for that, folks. Or it is to those who understand how the world works. Our educational systems are controlled by a very small group of people. Watch the Norman Dodd interview, folks. He points out the powers that be tried to get the historians to lie, and they wouldn't. So they said, we got to control the educational systems. Watch the Foster Gamble documentary called Thrive. Good old Foster investigated every major sector of the human endeavor, followed the money in every one of them, traced back to a small group of people. They own the media, they own the educational systems, they own the universities, they own the hospitals, they own every possible way they could normalize us to believe in what we believe today which is why we've got what we've got today. In fact, one way to think of disease, since they're lifestyle related, is that they're part of our feedback system. A lot like the gauges and instruments and even the computers nowadays on cars. Part of our feedback system. Think about it, on the dashboard of your car, you got lights that go off if, you, if your engine's too hot, temperature's too hot. We have the same thing. That's what a fever is. It's, like a gauge on our body telling us something's wrong. And just like a car, many times the problem has to do with the fuel. In fact, in most cases, most of those instruments on our panel are all lifestyle related, especially our food, the fuel we're putting in our body. And you have to realize how the world works to make any sense out of this. The powers that be have been using our sickness to control us. Sickness begets sickness. My regular audience know I say that all the time. They also know that I say health is the ultimate tool of control. It's how the whole world works. Control the, the experts who are supposed to know about how these warning lights go off and you can control, control the population. Think about it. If they say 70% of all these instruments going off, you got this problem, you got this problem, you got this problem, they're lifestyle related. What do doctors know about it? Not a thing. Why are they giving a monopoly on this? Got to go back to understand how the world works. Who's behind the curtain? Who's controlling the education that we teach doctors? Who's controlling the education we teach nutritionists? Who's controlling the education we teach historians? Why do you think history repeats itself? We don't have access to it. Our so-called experts are misdirected and they're just misdirecting us. In fact, everything that's going on right now on this planet can be thought of as one big magic act that's taken a long time to prepare because they had to normalize our belief system to make sure we do the right thing and follow the leader and do exactly what the powers that be want us to do. Again, every one of those instruments on our dashboard, so to speak, it's part of our feedback system. We're not interacting with our environment the right way. Is it our sleep? It could be. Is it the air? Yeah, you bet. That could be a problem too, so can our water. But when we look at the one thing we're doing wrong the most, it's our food. Putting in the wrong fuel. That's what's making most of these lights go off. But the people behind the curtain don't want us to ever figure that out. In fact, there's one light that goes off more than any other lights. And for the average person, it probably goes off about five times. At least that's what I read 30 years ago, and I'm sure it's a lot worse now. And of course, a lot of people don't have that light go off at all, which means some people have 10, 15 more. 
episodes where that light is going off every year. And it's the most obvious warning sign that we're putting the wrong fuel in our body. But we've been tricked by those people behind the curtain who are controlling what our experts think is the cause. They claim they know the cause, but they still haven't found a cure for it. And what is that one warning light that goes off more than anything that should tell us what's going on? It's colds and flus. We're, we've been told it's not the fuel. It's not your fault. It's a virus. Wasn't that long ago they blamed it on being under the influence of the devil. That's what influenza means. It's an Italian word in the medieval days. That's what it meant. You got the flu. Oh, you're in, under the influence of the devil. Can't see it, that invisible scapegoat. For years, they said it was bacteria. And we know it's not bacteria. They even admit it's not bacteria. They had to go to the viral cause of disease to try to stay in control. I'm telling you right now, my friends, the little beasties aren't the problem. The problem is the terrain. And you can prove this to yourself. Take a solid food vacation. Drink nothing but freshly made juices for an extended period of time for the appropriate length of time, it may take you several months, and you'll watch how your whole terrain changes. And if you've got a dozen ailments, there's a good chance every one of them will go away. If you're taking a dozen drugs, there's a good chance every one of those will never be needed again because you're addressing the cause, which doctors admit we don't know. And again, this isn't 70%, it's like 99.99%. And the other ones that they could blame on genetic defects or genetics in general, are also lifestyle related. Those are the accumulation of our parents' lifestyles. So it all comes back to taking responsibility. We've got to prove to ourselves that we can take control over all those gauges that are causing all of this pain and suffering on this planet simply by changing our terrain. I haven't had a cold or a flu in well over 30 years, and I meet quite a few other people who don't live as healthfully as I do, and they don't have colds or flus either. And the main thing they're doing that keeps them from having it would be exercising a lot. Exercise moves our lymph fluid. That's our sewage system around our cells. When we have colds and flus, that's where most of our colds and flus are originating from. They're basically coming from our own sewage system backing up. It's called auto-intoxication. I talk a whole lot more about this and disease mysteries revealed where I talk about the causes and the solutions to not only what our so-called experts label infectious diseases but also non-infectious diseases. I won't go into any more detail right now. All I want you guys to realize is the one warning sign that's going off over and over and over that should be telling us wrong fuel, wrong fuel, wrong fuel are colds and flus, colds and flus. Their body initiated and I know we've been tricked, we've been normalized into thinking that we're catching it, but that's where the magic act comes into play. They have to set up their trick well in advance, and it's been set up over 100 years in advance. I taped a video yesterday, but it's a real long video, and it, I'll probably be able to publish this one before I publish that one, and I may do that. If so, be sure and watch that. I, my tentative tile is why does history repeat itself? Uh, and I changed my mind this morning and it might change it before I get home and actually publish it. But watch that in more detail and watch Disease Mysteries Revealed and you can get a better understanding, a much better understanding than our so-called experts of what's really going on on this planet. Not to mention that it's given us a way out of the predicament we're in. Because it's got to be a bottom-up solution. We already see what's coming from the top down and what they're dictating to us. But the only way that's been made of possible is the way they've been conditioning and brainwashing us using normalizing power, which I talk about a lot more in the video I taped yesterday and how it works. And it's all to get us to, to do what we think is the right thing. If we want to do the right thing, we'll protect everyone else and ourselves. We'll wear a mask, we'll social distance, we'll lock ourselves down. We've been tricked into that. Just so that when those warning lights go off on our dashboard, we think outside our control, just ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. No, 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 no. It's the most important warning symptom that we have that's telling us we're doing something wrong. And if we ever wake up to this reality that we eat a cold, 
and we eat a flu, then we'll wake up to the reality that we eat almost all those other warning lights that are going off on the dashboard of our body, telling us something's wrong. We're not satisfying our needs. If you want to know, about, know more about how to satisfy our needs, also watch what is the healthiest diet for humans. I'll put links down below in the pinned comment. And we have to, once again, take responsibility. And I know how difficult it is for people to say, okay, I'm going to start eating my biophotons. I'm going to start eating my species-specific diet. I know how hard that is. That's why I put together a solid food vacation. It's the best preparation for a better way of life. It's the best preparation to help us understand that all these lights going off on the dashboard of our body is a lot more than the 70% they calculated back 27 years ago. It's way up there, almost 100%. And I'm telling you, the day we wake up to that reality, the day we wake up to, to the fact that colds and flus are, are not contagious, but we're eating them, then that's the day we also wake up that most of our illnesses and most of our illnesses are not outside of our control. They're within our control, and oh, man, when that day happens, we're all in for a treat.